Hi, I'm Annalie Jansons, and this is Art in 30. Today, I want to show you how to paint a rock. Yes, a rock. Um, I like painting little fairy garden houses and things like that into my garden for the summer. So I'm just going to show you here. I have a little minivan that I painted from a rock. This was perfect round, perfect rock for painting. And then I painted a little trailer that it pulls. And so this is in my garden in the summer and I just want it to do something like this. I'm not going to do that one because I don't have two of those rocks, but I will do a little fairy house. Um, I just did a quick sketch of what it's going to look like. So, you know, basic blue um, windows, flowers, that kind of thing. So I have a rock here that I've treated with white paint. I do paint on plain rocks though, but I noticed that it actually sucks in a lot of paint, so I wanted to treat this. However, if you do paint other rocks, think about what you're going to paint because sometimes you might want the rock to actually show through, like as the roof of the house, or if you're doing steps, like painting steps or stonework into the image, um, you can actually use the rock face itself for that, so that would save you some paint. So this one's all painted white, um, except for the bottom, and we're going to just get started. So I'm just using some regular craft paints, no big deal. If you want to know exactly what kind of paints I'm using, you can email me at lac.artists at yahoo.com. Um, so let's just get started here. So I'm just going to paint this base here blue. And so just, just liberally add this. This is acrylic paint. It'll dry pretty quick. And we'll have a cute little blue happy fairy house. I don't know if any of you do little fairy gardens. I know um, they're super fun and the kids really like them. And you can actually in garden centers buy like little furniture and all kinds of things. It's, it's almost like too cute to be able to stand it actually because I'm just like, oh, love it. So I'm gonna just um, do half of this because I'm gonna just put that as the roof. So just bring in this, and I would bring the back, I'm not going to paint the back right now because I want to do this flat, flat faced, but on the back I would do the back image of the house. So I'm just going to, if I have time I'll do that for this show, but otherwise you could just do, um, you know, a back side of a house with some windows and things like that. So, but for this purpose here. I will just do this. Oh, actually, I'm going to do the roof now, too. So for the roof, now this actually would have worked good for this if I would have left this um, as stone because I'm going to paint it gray. So I'm just going to mix a little bit of color here to make it gray. But if it would have been stone, it would it could have been like a stone, stone roof, right? So I, I often have, like when we have family over for barbecues or whatever, um, I'll pull out some rocks and the grandkids and my grandnieces and nephews, they have a little bit of a painting party. So um, it's a great way to engage the kids, even the adults actually, they do like painting. Um, getting a bunch of rocks, having a family barbecue, friends, whatever and getting everybody to paint something fun and then they have something to take home. So, you know, you can get some paints from the dollar, oh, whoops, got paint all over. You can get some paint from the dollar store or you can, you know, ask everyone to bring some paint, you know, if, they, if you don't want to, if you have a big group or whatever. But it's a really fun activity to do in the summer outside and, and then you get to display your um, artwork. Okay, so I'm just going to get a smaller paintbrush here because it's just easier. So I want some circular windows here. So I'm going to use just the black to just do some. 
And because this paint's not dry, it's going to kind of smear a little bit. But So you could potentially wait for the, watch the paint dry. <laughs> How exciting is that? Um, so you could wait for the paint to dry, or something that I do with acrylic paints is um, I use a blow dryer to dry it faster than, than, than natural drying. So if you're in a hurry and you want to dry it, just blow dry it. It'll dry, it, it'll get tacky enough that um, it'll work just fine. So I'm going to make these windows just kind of dark. dark with this paint. Looks like two eyeballs. You can make these square if you want. Probably should have moved that one over a little bit for the shutters. And again, the beauty of just painting these is that it doesn't matter if you have mistakes in there. It's whimsical. It's going to be in your garden. No matter what it looks like, people love garden rocks. And they're always like, oh my gosh, I love those. And you know, so just feel free to do, um, like just get creative and just have fun with it. So I'm just going to put some, oh yeah, it is really wet. So I'm just going to do, little shutters. I'll kind of fix those when it dries a little bit and add more color. But you can see how the rock kind of still sucks up the paint. No, oh, this is not working. I might have to wait until this dries and I didn't of course bring a blow dryer. Okay, let's just outline that for a second. Okay, so my recommendation is wait for it to dry a little bit. This is not working out as I wanted it to, but I'm just going to keep on moving along here. And let's just use a lot of it. So here we're doing the shutters. It'll still look cute when it's done. I know houses don't normally have round windows, but fairy houses do. That's the whole point of the, a fairy house has different, different shapes. And they can just be fun. This, <laughs> okay, you can see I'm struggling here a little bit with this wet paint. How's yours going? Are you painting? Note to audience, let the base dry first. But we're going to just get through this anyways here. All right, so let's just outline a little door. And we'll make kind of one of these rounded doors. Painting on paper is a little bit different than painting on a rock because there's so many of these crevices, so it's really hard to get the <laughs> them st straight lines because the paint takes a little bit differently, but, but then it adds its own charm to it, right? Okay, this time I'm actually going to use a brown. 
paint here. So I have that brown. And I'm going to make it just a tiny little bit lighter with the white. Maybe add a little bit of yellow for fun. And just pull that in there. And I obviously have to use quite a bit of it because of the wet blue underneath. But it's kind of given its own own look here. So it's actually easier if you paint the the black edge if you want to edge the door or not up to you, but if you paint it first and then paint over with the color of the door, because then you can actually make it a little bit thinner. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take this and draw a couple lines in here for the door. Okay, and then for the hinges, I'm just gonna use a really tiny brush to pull the hinges over on this old heavy oak door. You can almost imagine the little fairies living, living here. Let's do a little um, flower basket underneath the um, underneath the windowsill if we can. I'm just going to make it white. So we're just just making it kind of paint on paint here. So it's kind of wet on wet, but it'll work. You'll get the idea. You're probably doing a better job than I am because, you know, this is kind of a, let's see how it works out. I definitely am not as detail oriented with, or I'm not so worried when I'm painting rocks because to me it's it's kind of my chance to just make mistakes and be fine with it. And you know, it's going outside. Does it really matter if this is off? This looks off. This looks off. It's usually for me, although people really want them. But I can't really ship rocks because you know, they weigh a lot. So people do really want them though. So if you have a way to make them and sell them um, like at craft shows or something, they do go, people really like them. So, all right, now I wanna add some flowers. So I'm gonna take a tiny little brush here and just start making little little dots in here like little flowers so you can make them whatever color you want I'm not really a gardener so I just to me flowers are just red yellow orange blue purple and they're always just dots because that's what, how I depict flowers. <laughs> but if you actually know how to draw different flowers or paint different flowers, um, this is your chance to do that. So I'm gonna do some red ones in here too, but actually I'm gonna switch to yellow. Add some yellows in there. them kind of hanging so you're just kind of dabbing them have fun with this you know Oop, that was kind of a blob but you know what I'm not gonna be too concerned about it because this is I'm gonna add some purple this is just for fun it's for your garden your grandma's garden your mom's garden your daughter's garden. 
Maybe your son's garden, your daughter-in-law's garden, your granddaughter's garden. I don't know why I keep saying girls only. Grandson, your son's garden. He might really like this. All right, and then I'm going to just put some green in there just for the, I was call it foliage for the leaves. So again, I'm just kind of dabbing here and there. Little dots. So I'm going to also do some flowers just to here. And for some reason, I really like the red against the blue here. So there's going to be a lot of red. And that'll look like there's some flowers there. And just kind of make them different height. And I'm going to add some yellow in there too. So these are like little um and you can go all the way around the house i'm not sure if i have time to finish this rock but um for this episode but i mean i just want to get you started whoops that had too much water so get you started anyway and then you can start when you go for your walks or your hikes but not in the national park um, you can start looking at rocks again don't take rocks from the National Park. Okay. And then let's do some grass. Actually, I use a different brush for the grass just to speed it up a little bit. So you can do a little bit of grass here. Coming up the sides. Okay. I think we had a, there was a little circular window here. So I'm just gonna, whoa, that. Yeah, now this, now this rock has kind of dried already. How's your rock coming along? Are you painting one? Have you painted them before? If you've actually painted a bunch of rocks, I'd love to see them. So you can post them. Um, I have a Facebook page, but if you want to email them to me at lac.artist at yahoo.com, that would be great. And I can share them. If you have rock paintings, or I mean, yeah, I guess they're rock paintings. Not paintings of rocks, but paintings on rocks. Although I like paintings of rocks as well, so. Okay, so we've got, we've got this happening here, all right? So now you can add some, oh, ah, it's gonna fall, okay. Now you can add some, you could add some vines in here. So I'm gonna use my small brush for this one just because, and I'm in kind of an awkward position here, so I'm gonna kind of paint upside down so you don't do it this, like do whatever is comfortable for you to paint vines in here. Because this is kind of, because I'm just wanting to show you. So if I'm just pulling the vines up through the rock. And then, then I'll, I'll drop it over into the front too, so it'll kind of wrap around. 
So just have fun with this, this as well. You will really notice that the rock shape um, really affects your brush strokes. It's kind of interesting. I'm, I'm really liking this really tiny brush for this though because I'm seeming to have more control with that. Okay, and then you can just add your leaves and then we'll make the, we'll kind of, I was planning on making this kind of like a lilac bush or whatever you want if you have um, clematis. I do know that one. I think I said I'm not a gardener, but I do know some names of some things. And I sure appreciate flowers. But my husband always does all the planting, so. All our garden kudos go to him. All right, so here's some vines. I'm gonna do just some purple. My, my standard dotting flowers where I'm just doing a bunch of dots. But you know what? It totally just works for what we need here. So I'm just gonna push this over and show you how I went over on here. Oh, I gotta bring a couple more. A couple more branches over just cause I kinda like them going over there. It makes for a very bright and busy fairy house here, but you know, it's supposed to be kind of whimsical, fun. All right, so there's some coming up there. We could do a little bit more coming up over here. So I'm just gonna go. Maybe do a different color. Right. We'll just, uh, okay, I'm not sure what happened there. It's kind of hard to paint. I'm kind of upside down, doing this upside down. That's okay, all right. So I think I might do some yellow. I don't know if there's such a thing as yellow flowers on a vine, but I'm just gonna make that up because this is a fairy house. So it can be all pretend and I'm really liking the yellow because it's bright and happy. And this is a happy painting, happy little fairy house. Only joy things happen here. So when you look at it, okay. All right, so that looks pretty busy there. I think we can, um, while we were on break, I actually did paint the back of this. So maybe we can add some stuff to the back. And that's almost dry. So this is actually gonna be a little bit harder to do because I, want, I did the other one kind of flat. And I missed a spot here. My water is getting pretty messy. It's um, nice to just change that water when you can. Um, I think I'll just leave it for now. I'm just gonna fill that one spot here. Okay, so you could, you could actually potentially bring, um, bring a little bit of this over here to have on the back, but the back is not that important. It's not gonna be your focal in the garden. It's probably gonna be hidden by a lot of the, um, your own flowers and, and whatever you have there in your garden. And then once this dries, I actually recommend varnishing it so, so that the elements, the paint doesn't start fading. 
And so I use like a gloss varnish, or you could actually use a semi-gloss varnish or whatever you like. I like the glossy because it really like kind of makes it pop. And um, so I wait for it to dry for a good 24 hours at least, and then I'll paint that clear varnish on it. And then it looks really nice. So this one, these ones that I had earlier, these ones just have, um, I think it's a semi-gloss one. You can see it's kind of shiny and and it's been outside all summer and it doesn't even look like it's faded. Like it's been in the heat and the rain and it did not go through a hailstorm though. So I did bring them in for the winter though. I didn't leave them out there. And um, just because I didn't want them to get wrecked. So um, yeah, so just kind of bring them in for the winter and then they'll last longer. And, um, but the varnish definitely helps them. All right, so thanks for spending this um, half hour with me with Art in 30. Um, if you have any questions on the materials I used or the paints or brushes, just email me at lac.artists at yahoo.com and I can provide you with some lists of information. Thanks and see you next time.